Marikan. All right, uh, it's just after one o'clock. This is the alleged Nauticon keynote. And as I said, unfortunately, me, uh, Tiger, my wife, can't be here because uh, she's not feeling too well right now. So hopefully she'll be back with us later. I um, originally had a speech, something I had spent considerable time on uh, over the past two and a half months. And I'm going to summarily throw it away <laughs> because I like, you know, I, I don't care. I really don't. Um, I, I value little my time and my money, which is apparent considering that uh, right now, <laughs> oh boy, I'm in trouble. Uh, thank you all for coming, first of all. I really appreciate, appreciate all of your attendance. It's apparent from the faces I've seen and the friends I have here that this is the hardcore group. This is the group that really knows what DEF CONS, or part, <laughs> Well, I'm sure you know what DEF CON's about, don't you? Um, but you know what Nauticon's about. And you know what it's about because last year we built a community from nothing, from the ground up, uh, a community based on hackers, technologists, feds, artists, musicians, DJs. You name it, we were all here. Uh, and I will say in greater numbers than we are here today, um, which is depressing because, as I mentioned at the end of last year's, uh, not a con. I was out six and a half thousand dollars this year. I'm out eight, and I just bought a house. But it's worth it, and I mean that because this is, as I said last year, I'm gonna say again, the best fucking party I've ever thrown in my life. And one of the things that really makes me happy about this community and not a con is that. Every person that I've talked to, speaker, attendee, staff member, has said, I'm having a good time. Some of the presenters I've spoken to have, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to them and I've said, uh, I'm really sorry that there were only three people in your talk, or five. And some of them have said, I had the best time of my life because those three people wanted to hear me and had an interest in what I was saying and what I was presenting and the information I had to share, and that made it worth it. And I'm trying to internalize right now that for myself. Because even though this might not be a financial success for me, which it's not, um, I've succeeded because I managed to bring, again, almost 150 people down to Cleveland earlier in April. It's sunny outside. I'll, I'll take that. Cold as hell. Well, we're, we're, you know, you know, I kind of an oxymoron, but, <clears throat> but we brought people here, and, and you know, we have people from Canada, we have people from Finland, we have people from all over the United States, Minnesota. Minnesota. There we go. Um, and it's all about community, and it's all because a lot of you who paid good money to be here, whether you're a speaker or an attendee, you know, you all had costs to get here, time and effort, or to get a hotel, which will help, by the way, we booked enough rooms so that I will save a little bit of money, and I do appreciate that. Um, so, you know, the fact that you're here is really important. Um, our concept last year of doing art and technology uh, is the reason, uh, the, well, the response we, we received to that was the reason we're doing this again. Uh, it was well appreciated. Everybody said, well, why hasn't someone done this before? You know, why haven't we had this conversation before? And I said, no, I, I don't know. And so taking from that, we realized, you know, I, I kind of knew all along and mentioned it last year's program that, you know, we had art and technology and then community through technology. And for a long time, on a subconscious level, for, for me at least, um, you know, this year's theme really kind of uh, predates Nauticon a great deal. Uh, I realized for a long time now that having a sense of place and purpose and, and companionship among a community of my peers uh, has really been critical to my overall happiness. 
Uh, as a young kid, as a young kid, I remember feeling all alone and sitting in my room and not having any friends or anybody who understood me. And that's because I understood technology, and they didn't. And there was no way at 10 years old I could explain to my friends why playing Tetris on my IBM PCXT was cool. Like, that's lame. Let's go play basketball. Come on. I can't make a hoop. And so it was really hard for me to find friends. And for one of my birthdays, after getting my IBM XT and hacking away and having my dad reformat the hard drive to run DOS 4.11 or whatever a million ten times, I used subliminal messaging to get my first modem. So every time we'd go by the computer store, I'd go, modem. Hi, Dad. Uh, what's going on, modem? <laughs> after about three months of them getting sick, to, sick and tired of me doing that, they bought me a 2400 baud modem. Uh, and shortly after getting that modem, I started dialing up my local BBSs, uh, Modem World here, PC Ohio, all of the all the BBSs in 216. And all of a sudden, I could interact and talk with people from the other side of the city, and then on the other side of the county. And then I realized if I didn't want to get my ass in trouble, I could call the other side of the country or the world and talk to people who knew exactly what it was I was into. And my world grew and came closer to me because I made the effort to go out and contact these people whom, you know, I didn't know of before. And, you know, I had an instant community of all these people who wanted to hear what I had to say. And I was able to relate to them all the alienation issues I had as a teenager because, face it, most of them were teenagers or 20-somethings that were still acting like teenagers. So I was able to find and relate to people what it was I was into, and I had a small community of friends. Now let's look at where we're at today. Obviously, we have a network of global communication systems that blanket the earth, and it's just insane, you know, that I can talk to any corner of the globe. I can hop on IRC and talk to my Nauticon organizers or some of my fans, hop on IRC2600.net, join pound Ohio 2600, or if I'm insane, pound 2600 itself, which has like 150 frickin' people or something crazy. Yeah, represent, check it. Um, <laughs> and do that, you know, I, I can hop on the mud in Finland, which uh, Gore and Banba, my two wizards, will be uh, speaking later today. Um, and I could party with my friends from Finland, the United Kingdom, Virginia, and sit in the same party and kill monsters with my wife sitting on the couch next to me. I can do that now. I couldn't, I couldn't even fathom this, you know, trying to dial into Prodigy so I can play their shitty graphics game that runs at, you know, uh, one-tenth of a frame per second. The ability to interact now is completely ubiquitous, and the technology to enable all of us to interact gives us very few reasons not to be able to form new and interactive communities. And actually, I'm going back to my notes. Check this, because I'm actually getting energized. I'm getting fucking pumped now. Oh, yeah. I'm on a But the question remains, with all of this technology, what are we here right now? What would bring about 150 people from literally all around the world to Cleveland on this, on this day? I often wonder if we've gotten to the point where technology is so commonplace and communication so easy that there's no more challenge. I mean, I remember back when that P when I had that PCXT clone, uh, you had to make sure that the modem strings were right so you could dial in. And you had to find the right phone number. Thankfully, Cleveland was easy. You had the wine cellar list. God bless the wine cellar list. I love that. And then you had to try to figure out what the BBS menuing system was to get to the files you wanted or the menuing system you wanted. And of course, there really wasn't any search because you know, you're uh, probably dialing into somebody else's XT that he has running on a 30 gig hard drive or a C64 that's limping along. It was hard, and it was challenging, and it was fun. But where's the fun now in being able to sit down at my desk in the morning, move my mouse, screensaver goes away, log in, check my mail, check my weather, load up the browser in Safari that loads up 10 other windows, fuck the Macs, true Curtis, uh, you know, saw, slash dot. I just exist on the network now. I don't interact with the network. I sit and chat with my friends, and nowadays on IRC, you know, sometimes I'll just sit there and let it wash over me, like the Matrix. There's no challenge. 
Hence, without challenge, there is no intrigue. And without intrigue, we get bored and we won't actually communicate. So I ask again, what brings us together this weekend? With so many other methods of communication at our immediate disposal, what is important about Nauticon, not Noticon, and the pantheon of other events, such as, you know, DEF CON, Hope, Freaknik, ShmooCon, all that. Uh, props to the sh folks who helped run ShmooCon if they're here. Thank you for uh, shout outs for Nauticon. I appreciated that. Um, but anyway, why Nauticon is the obvious question. And it has an obvious answer that we all know, but we really don't want to admit it because it's kind of warm and fuzzy. It's because we like to be around each other. It's because we need that face-to-face -face communication. We need that implicit information. If I, if I tell you something stupid, I want to see the look of whiskey, tango, foxtrot, froggy. <laughs> or if I say something funny, I want to hear you laugh. I want to hear you laugh. I don't want to see a colon smiley on the screen. <laughs> And believe me, I've been there. I mean, I met my wife on Freenet back in 1995 when somebody hacked into my account <clears throat> and started talking to her as me. That really sucked. <laughs> but uh, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have met her. And we kept an online long-distance relationship from 1996 through 1999. And that was hard because we didn't have that implicit communication. She was 18, 19 years old. I was 20, 21, broke as hell in college. Still broke as hell, but you know, that's all good. And on a personal level, I wanted to be with her. I wanted to spend time with her and, and see her laugh at my dumbass jokes and hear her, you know, try to learn technology with me because I had such a head start and she's picking it up as fast as she can and now she's the one that got accepted to grad school and I'm the one that's still a technical manager. Yeah, go her. She kicks ass. So you know, there's all these things that you don't get online. How often can you buy a beer for your friend over IM? Well, maybe there's a market for me to actually make money to do that. I'll keep that in mind, but it doesn't exist. You don't have that. So we have a forum now for open and more personal communication. So does this community thing just happen? Uh, while planning Nauticon, I continuously labored over this, over this question. Um, what was it that I was supposed to be doing in order for this community to become a reality? What role did I have to play in the cultivation of this community? For, for a lot of reasons, uh, I'm very used to working on projects that improve and benefit me. Projects that make me feel happy and fulfilled and that cause me to receive accolades and praise and the love of my fans. I like being the one with the good ideas, the one that's the benevolent dictator that makes sure things run smoothly and that everybody's happy. I'm a team builder. And I do this if only because I want to make sure I have some part in seeing that things happen to the way I want them to. I have an ego, and I'm very willing to admit that. However, a lot of the time, that ego gets in the way of this whole thing we call community. As an example, when I first heard about Jason Scott and Redman's idea to do Nauticon Radio, my thoughts involved to the not invented here syndrome. I was pissed because I had conjured up a similar idea a long time before. Similar idea, same name. And I had dabbled in making it a reality. And I thought, and how dare someone else think of a project on that size and scale without at least asking me first if it was a good idea? What business is that? How are they even going to do it without me? And then I stopped. And I stepped back. And I realized that I remembered and took to heart in a profound way the idea and the reality that Nauticon was not about me at all. Not one bit. And it never has been. And I was being a fucking idiot. And I was being selfish. Because that train of thought counter to the concept of community that I and everybody else working this event have worked long and hard to culture and nurture it was counterproductive to the entire founding principles upon which Nauticon was based. Back in 2003, when I had met 
Zam and Chaos Punk, who is probably getting married right now to his beautiful bride. We're at SummerCon with an attendance, not much more than this. And we said, we could do this better. We can still create a fun con, and we need to try it. And the fact that while getting pissed off about the Nauticon radio thing, you know, I realized that that's what all those other events lacked. They, they lacked a lot of the really impromptu crazy sh I mean, a Citadel, look at this dude. He brings the most whack-ass shit every year. And things break, but everybody has a really good time. Because they're like, oh, man, can I fix that power supply? Or what the hell are you thinking? But that's cool. I mean, he was crashed on people's floors last year. And he's having a good time. I mean, Echo. Check it. Echo said every con I can think of having a great time, making stuff up, telling people about his military history and all the stuff that he's interested in. I mean, you have so many people doing cool things. Jason Scott, the fact that he this morning, I said, Jason, uh, the guy who's supposed to give the Coleco Adam talk um, can't be here because I think he's at a funeral for a student that case that died, and it's just, yeah, he's like, okay. And proceeded to give an impromptu history on the history of, of Coleco, and all of a sudden people are like, oh, Jason Scott's giving an impromptu on what? I don't care, but he's awesome, so let's go check it out. And that's what that is really all about. Not a con... Now more than ever is about me, about me seeing other people benefit, not only from my work, but from the effort put into this enterprise by all of us, staff, attendees, speakers. Because I gain a newfound appreciation in seeing people at Nauticon, my community, improving themselves in small but perhaps profound ways. It is about giving people, Nauticon is about giving people a venue where they can be their best even if it's for just a moment. And even if it's for something really stupid and trivial, as long as it's fun, it's about seeing people happy and finding something that maybe was missing in their lives, like I was back in the BBS, back in 1985, 86. It's about also seeing other people get the credit that they deserve for doing all the hard work that they've put in. Because even though I'm the one losing money, there's a lot of other people back there who are put in a lot of their time. Mark, for example, has contacted all the companies and all the sponsors to beg them to get their prizes here. And when they didn't ship, he was the one to follow up three or four or ten times saying, please, sir, I know you said you give us stuff for free. When can we get it? And not sounding like a dick. You know, that's, that's a skill. That's time. The fact that we have all these AV recordings. Last year we did one track of audio recordings, got maybe 75% of them. This year we're doing full audio video in both rooms. That takes a lot of time. That takes a great staff. And there's a lot of people that are very happy to volunteer to do that because they believe in what we're doing. So in, I guess in closing, if I was to say Nauticon is what we make of it, it would be definitely trite and cliche. But a phrase I like, it is cliche precisely because it is true. Um, Nauticon is about us and what we do. It means starting on some glorious projects and demonstrating them here on stage. It also means meeting new people and having a drink with them at the bar. The important thing is that we keep talking and thinking and challenging ourselves to understand why it is we make the journey to events like this, why we spend the money and the time and the effort. For me, it's about bringing a really big world of people many of whom I don't get to see, but a couple times a year closer to me. It's also not about making me the center of attention. It's about helping everybody to be their own center of attention at various times through the weekend. Because if it really weren't for you, the 150 of you that attended, there really would be no reason for us to, to have thrown this in the first place. And even though we didn't get 800 people here, the fact that you're here and having a good time makes all the difference to me now. Because I'm having, I'm having a great time, and I hope you continue to enjoy Nauticon. And I'm going to be around, and I'm going to talk to you, but I'm going to be in the background where my assistance is really needed. And other than this pontification here on the stage, I don't want to be the center of attention. I want to see you guys do cool stuff. So do some cool shit for me, okay? Thanks.